Hi guys, glory to Jesus Christ. So I know I haven't done a video in a few days. Sorry about that. I try to pump out at least one a day, but <coughs> I've been trying to get rid of my cough. And I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off, which is usually what happens is um, we're gearing up toward Easter. Is my whole life goes, but it's a good, <laughs> so we rejoice in that. Um, so we, I need about, let's see, what did we say? I said I was going to do the urine writing video and I got up to 50 followers. We're almost there. I just need another handful. So let's reel in some more folks and then I'm going to do the urine video. This is, if you haven't heard of this, I'm going to be demonstrating how prisoners send secret messages using a variety of heat sensitive substances on paper, including their own pee. So that's going to be fun, and then I do not believe I am volunteering to do this, but I'm going to make another video in a couple, you know, in a little while after I've recovered from the urine. <laughs> I'm going to do a video about prison food. I'm going to make wine in a plastic bag with old fruit, and it's going to be nasty. And I'm going to do crazy melty candy uh, using only ingredients that are on the commissary list at my home prison. Okay, this could be really a bad idea because <laughs> uh, I actually cannot metabolize alcohol. I do not drink alcohol at all because um, I had stomach surgery a few years ago and now I cannot metabolize it properly. So I don't have a, like, a moral problem with it, but I have no idea how I'm going to drink janky prison wine. I'm probably going to try to get like, going to get one of my friends to do it or <laughs> Anyway, so you might be uh, you might be logging onto YouTube to see Daria go to the ER. Hopefully not. Anyway, so we are coming up on the fourth week of Great Lent. So I just wanted to touch base with you guys a little bit about this because Lent is is the most misunderstood season of, of the church year, um, and I think it always has been that way because there's a lot of confusing about what fasting is, about what we are supposed to be doing during Lent. I already made a video about fasting, so I'm not going to be parroting that all over again. If you have questions about what fasting is, maybe go watch that video. It might be helpful. Hopefully it's helpful. But I just want to talk about the fallacy that Lent is a time to feel bad about yourself, or Lent is a time when you don't get to eat any of the foods you like, or Lent is a time of, you know, punishing yourself. No. No, 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 no. A thousand times no. And it's easy to see how somebody could think that. It's easy to see how somebody uh, in or out of the church could kind of think that, oh, well, it's just all about these externals. Okay, so if you're wondering that, I'm not making fun of you at all. I had those questions myself. Okay, remember, I'm an adult convert. When I was in school, I knew nothing about this. Even when I was in college, nothing about this. So no judgment or rebuke there whatsoever. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is taken by force. It is something that is to be conquered. Now, we cannot do that on our own. We know this. And the way that we conquer those gates of heaven and wrench them open is by following Christ on that narrow path of salvation. Through constant vigilance, constant prayer, through efforts to deny our own wills and to follow Christ, he must decrease, or excuse me, ugh, Freudian slip. I must decrease, he must increase. That's what St. John the Baptist was talking about. That we need to get rid of everything in our lives, by God's grace, that is separating us from the love of God. Somebody in the prison said something really profound a couple weeks ago. He said, the gates of hell are actually locked from the inside. Because hell is full of people who don't want to change, who don't want to repent, who don't want God. As crazy as that is, the gates of hell are locked on the inside. So, if we would prefer to avoid hell, and I do recommend that, <laughs> I know I, I would prefer to avoid it, we take this time to kind of do some spiritual spring cleaning. And fasting helps us do that. But it's not about avoiding certain foods, is it? It's about avoiding sins. It's about avoiding anger, malice, jealousy, envy, rage, holding grudges, uh, the desire for revenge, greed, lust, uh, inordinate attractions to all kinds of things. It's about that. It's about turning away from all of that crap and coming home to our father's house. And so there is this joyful expectation of, it's a very complex 
phenomenon, a very complex emotion of, yes, I've sinned and I'm, I'm ashamed of my sins, I'm sorry for my sins, but I also believe that I am forgiven for my sins because Jesus said it and I believe it. So it's extraordinarily complex. It's, it's I, I don't even know what to compare it. It's almost like a Rubik's Cube. There's all these things going on at once. But that joy, that inner joy is indispensable to, to Lent and to the Christian life in particular, because otherwise what happens is if we have no joy, we have no hope. And at that point, our Lenten efforts, our spiritual struggles become actually a blasphemous mockery of their true intention. If you fast according to the letter of the law and you give maybe extra money to charity during Lent or whatever, but your heart is not repentant, you are not striving to cultivate humility, to love God more, to love yourself less. If you're not doing any of that, you're wasting everyone's time. You're wasting your time. You're wasting the time of people around you. You're wasting God's time even. So we have to use this time that we're given to really, really, really try to have our interior life washed clean. I've never understood why that offends people, by the way. You know, what is it about that offer of salvation that upsets people? Well, I th you know what I think it is? I think it's because we don't want to stop sinning. We want other people to stop sinning, but we don't want to do it. And we love making up reasons why we need our sins. We love our sins. We're comfortable with them. Uh-uh. Get rid of it. Because we cannot simultaneously conquer the, the gate of heaven. Throw open that gate. We can't do it if we're still looking back towards our sins, like Lot's wife. You know the story of Lot, right? Old Testament. Lot and his family, some of them were righteous. The Lord said, fine, before I totally obliterate Sodom and Gomorrah by raining down death from above, if y'all want to get out of here, fine, I'm going to let you do it, but you got to do it right now, and you got to not look back. Lot's wife looked back, turned into a pillar of salt, right? That's spiritually telling us. The time is now. Hellfire is at the doors. Don't look back. No attachment to sin is worth the penalty for that sin. I say that with the utmost confidence. So, we have this, this joyful, sober, and unspeakably grateful anticipation of the second coming of Christ. Now, we know because Christ has said, this is going to be the last judgment, right? We don't know when it's going to happen. It doesn't matter when it's going to happen. It matters that it is going to happen. But because we believe the gospel and because we believe God's promise that if we repent and confess our sins and then try to not do them again in a spirit of love and humility, and if we let our entire life be guided by the principle of gratitude for undeserved salvation, that when the Lord comes again, we are going to have good news <laughs> because we are looking for that Christ who is merciful, who is patient, long-suffering, who forgives our sins when we repent of them. So we are going to find that merciful Good Shepherd Christ. Because we have been merciful to others. Hopefully, right? That's a big condition of salvation, by the way, is mercy toward other people. If we have showed mercy to them, he will show mercy to us. On the flip side, if we have not shown mercy to others, we are not going to receive any ourselves either. This is serious business. This is the most serious business of all time. This is the ultimate business of ultimate destiny. So, we proclaim then in repentant joy, in bright sadness, that forgiveness is available if we'll just reach out and take it. So this week, and always, my prayer, and hopefully yours too, is for God to give us the grace of showing us very clearly where the path of salvation is, of taking us by our wretched and outstretched hands and leading us on that path, and by giving us the grace to be able to do these spiritual feats that otherwise we would not be able to do. The guys at the prison always look at me, you know, 
like I have two heads when I say, um, you know, yes, Bob, in answer to your question, yes, it is extremely hard to do this. And as a matter of fact, Robert, you can't do it. They go, <gasps> and I say, that's right. I just said that you can't do it and neither can I, but guess what? Christ can with God, all things are possible. Christ can, and he is, and he will. We just have to follow him. Philippians 2.12, right? We work out our own salvation daily with fear and trembling. It's a joyful fear, though. What a great thing. Joyful fear. Where else in life do you feel that? Nowhere. Joyful fear. So, <coughs> I'm going to wrap this up because I'm coughing like an idiot again. Oh. Anyway, those are just some thoughts. Thoughts on Great Land. So, God bless you all. Every single one of you, thank you so much for watching. I really do mean that, by the way, even if you disagree with me. Thank you so much. Um, please do pray for me. And again, I'm dead serious. Please actually do remember me in your prayers. Because <laughs> I really need you to do that. Um, please, if you're not subscribed already, please do subscribe. Please click the like button. Even if you are a subscriber, if you click the like button, it really, really, really super helps. Please do that. Please share, comment, message, smoke signals, whatever. God bless you all. And I'll see you guys in the next clip, okay? Have a good night. God bless you.